please turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, from verse 13 to 16, New King James Version. Hebrews 11, let's go with the end, yes. Praise God. And we want to read these verses together. These all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So God, we thank you for ministering, and we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Faith that pleases God. Faith that pleases God is one where you believe in his promises without wavering. Amen. He likes that kind of faith. Amen. As you look at the book of Hebrews and specifically Hebrews chapter 11, that chapter is broken down like this. Verse 1, we have a definition of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, faith enabled people in the past to overcome. Verse 3, faith gives understanding to the invisible world. Verse 4, 5, 6, and 7, it talks about Abel's faith, Enoch's faith, Noah's faith. Verse 8, Abraham's obedience by faith. Verse 9 to 10, Abraham's sojourn, life of faith. And then verse 11 to 12, Sarah's faith and its results. But I like verse from verse 13, where it tells us all these people were still living by faith when they die, hmm. they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on the earth. As you look at it and you um, think about it seriously, they believed in God's promises. And as you go back to the book of Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1, hear what God said to Abraham or Abraham. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a what? To a land that I will show you. There are some people who don't want to leave their parents' home. But God told him that you must leave, and you will go to a place that I have for you to a land that I will show you. And what happened, what was his response in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8, uh, what happened, Abraham obeyed the voice of God. Now listen, that was a lot of faith. Because God did not say to him where he was going. Hmm. He said, leave. Leave. Pack and leave. Get out of here. And I will show you a land. And the Bible tells us when you get into Genesis chapter 13, 
verse 14 to 17, you can write this down. But God told Abraham, he showed him the land. And hear what he says. Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Verse 15. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. Hallelujah. And, and he comes back now in Genesis 15 from verse 13 there. He says, then he said to Abraham, no certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. Could you imagine that? When you think of the Bible, you will understand God says, Abraham, leave your home. I will give you a land. I am promising you this. But listen, Abraham had gotten to a point. He saw the land, but, but, but let me use this here. He saw the land, but he didn't have the title deed for the land. Oh, but Abraham still believed in God. Not only that, the promise was passed on to Isaac, and it was also passed on to Jacob. Look at verse 4 of Genesis 28. He says, may he give you, and this is Isaac speaking to Jacob here. He said, may he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you now reside as a foreigner, the land God gave to Abraham. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible would have us to know that smart man Jacob was running. From Esau. Amen. And what happened in, in Genesis 28 uh, 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 from verse 10, but we just want to look at verse 13. He, the Bible said he heaped some stones. Now I, I could only imagine, you know, how, how he could sleep on stones. <laughs> but the thing is, he heaped some stones and he lay there and he fell asleep. And the Bible said in verse 13, there above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are living. He said that to Abraham. He said that to Isaac. He said that to Jacob. And yet they did not have the title deed for it, but they believed God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible would have us to know that Abraham, what he did, he purchased piece of that land. And Sarah was buried there. Abraham was buried there. Isaac was buried there. When Jacob died, before he died, he said, make sure and bury me on that piece of land. And then the Bible would have us to know in Genesis chapter 50 from verse 24 and specifically verse 25. Hear the advice of Joseph, Joseph to the children of Israel. And Joseph made the Israelites swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid. And then you must carry my bones up from this place. In other words, don't leave me in Egypt. Don't leave uh, my bones in Egypt. Uh, I want you to take them up uh, and carry them to that promised land. But oh, the Bible said they died. But they did not have the title deed. They knew God promised them something. And they never bought acres of land and say, okay, we're going to settle down on this earth. Uh, we're going to build big tents and bands and everything like that. No, they were going to and fro. To and fro. They were moving and moving. Because why? God had promised them something. And they knew that God will fulfill his promise. Uh, and they walked in accordance to that and let me say this to you this morning if we feel faith is just believing for today or believing for tomorrow or believing for next month listen faith is something 
you have got to hold on to the promises of God. It doesn't matter how long, but I'm going to hold on to the promises of Almighty God. How many mothers have died? How many fathers have died? Holding the hands of their children, their sons and their daughters, and say, it's my prayer that you will give your life to Jesus. They never saw it in some cases. They never saw their children run into an altar and accepting Jesus Christ. But when they passed on, some even in the funeral, got up and asked Jesus Christ to be Lord of their lives. Some a year after, some two years after, some three years after. Because why? They died believing God that something will happen in their children's life. And it came to pass. And so it's the same with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They died believing that eventually their descendants will inherit what God said it will come to pass but I like Peter now because the Bible said they were sojourners and pilgrims moving back and forth searching for this place and, and depending on God's guidance but hear what 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 11 tells us. Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims. <laughs> Here is it, Peter is calling us the same. <laughs> when did we, uh, 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 when we became sojourners and pilgrims, it happened when we gave our lives to Jesus. <laughs> Oh, some people want to put down everything on this earth. But listen, my brothers and sisters, one day you're going to leave it. The Bible said we must occupy until he comes. Yes, I understand that. We must leave an inheritance for our children's children. I understand all that. But listen, this world is not our home. And so what happened? The first thing here, as you look at Peter, Peter says, Beloved, I beg you, I beg you, sorry, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly loss, which war against your soul. Listen, he's not only talking about uh, um, sexual acts here, like fornication and adultery. No, he's not. But they are fleshly uh, sin. He's talking about sin in general. We need to abstain ourselves from the loss of the flesh. As sojourners and pilgrims on this earth, come on, we have got to pull ourselves back. Because why? These things have dire consequences. Amen. Oh, sometimes they look innocent. I can just walk in and walk back out. Some people did. Some people literally walk in. Enjoy it for a moment and then got the privilege to walk back. But some, it's, it was like a trap. They walked in and they got caught and were never able to come back out. Man, it's something else. We are pilgrims and sojourners on this earth. And you can't allow anything to distract you. You can't allow anything to pull you away from what God has prepared for us. Listen, the battle is in our minds. That's why we have got to defeat the church. Hallelujah. Oh, it's always a thought. Uh, always something coming in our minds. Uh, you can do this and get away with it. Uh, you can do this. Uh, oh, and always come back to God uh, and say sorry. Listen, this is a war. This is a struggle that we have to fight every day of our lives. Listen, we have the old man. When you give your life to Christ, that old sinful nature didn't say, okay, goodbye, have a nice day, and he left. He wants to regain back control of your life and my life. Not even the devil leaves you. 
You can talk about, you know, some people, we say they are lieutenants and captains in the army of God. And we salute them. <laughs> captain in the army, in God's, in, in the devil's mind. You ain't no captain. <laughs> Come on, you there with me. The old man doesn't say, well, okay, why well, you saved for about 40 years or 30 years or 20 years and I will kind of ease it off. No. As a matter of fact, you feel that the older you are in the faith, it's the more. <laughs> oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen to this. We have got to be careful. You know the Bible talks about Noah. You know, and, and really, I'm, I'm really impressed with his record. Think of the time he built this ship. And Noah talked to many and tell them, repent, a flood is coming. And they didn't know it. And the Bible said there came a time when God shut the door. Noah and his family were in there. And the animals, and God shut the ark of the door. I believe with all my heart, if God had allowed Noah to do it, Noah would have opened the door again. God shut it. All right, that's the end of it. But here what the Bible tells me. Now, after everything abated, everything stopped, Noah got drunk. Ah. Come on. Noah drank the, the wine tasted so well that he kept going cup after cup and that's it. Noah was a drunkard. We got to watch ourselves. Look at something as powerful as that that happened to Noah and he experienced and the Bible said Noah drunk. The Bible also talks about David. David a man after God's own heart. One day, he should have been on the battlefield, you know, instructing and guiding and so forth. He's on his balcony, saw this woman bathing, and instead of saying, you know, like some of us, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, and walk away. <laughs> he stood up there and took it in like it's a movie. Come on, and then called for the woman after, slept with her, committed the act of adultery. A man as powerful as, as, as David. And look at what he did. Brethren, we have got to understand the old man, that old sinful nature, doesn't respect the experiences that we have in Christ. That old nature does not respect the many nice times you have in Christ. Listen, you and I, we have to abstain. When we know something is wrong, we have got to abstain. Stand. The Bible says you have an advocate with the Father that if you sin, get back up as quick as possible. Amen. Because why? This world is not our home. Come on. And when you read the Bible and it talks about heaven, man, who wants to miss heaven? Come on. Bible talks about street of gold. Hallelujah. I would always say it, you know, sometimes I hear people talk about it and maybe one day we will have a debate. When they get to heaven, they're going to look for grandma, grandpa, mommy, daddy, hug them up and twist them in the air. Ah, nice to see you. But I'm telling you, when I read about heaven, Brother Mac, and, I, and, and it talks about what heaven is all about, I don't know when I get up there, I'm going to be asking, hey, where's grandpa? Where? I don't think I have that problem. I think when I get there... And see the glory of Almighty God. Have mercy. I would want to praise. I would want to worship. I would. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Heaven will be a great place. And I am just a sojourner. I am just a pilgrim in this land. But my destination is to where God has gone and prepared for me. So Peter said, hey, watch yourself. Abstain. Because those things, if you don't abstain, could get you in trouble. And you may not get to that destination. Amen. Secondly, in verse 12, I like what Peter said here, 1 Peter 2 and verse 12. He says, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that they speak that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, be, they may by your good works, which they observe, 
glorify God in the day of visitation. Listen, people are looking at you. As a Christian, especially as a pilgrim and a sojourner on this land, all eyes on you. You can say what you want. Oh, pastor, I don't like that. I don't like people looking at me. I don't like secret admirers. That's your business. That is not going to stop it from happening. People are looking at you. And you can talk about, I don't care what people say. I don't care how people, come on, you got to care. You've got to do what you were ordained to do. The Bible said, let our light so shine that what? Men may see it and do what? Glorify our Father which is in heaven. And let me tell you this. There are some people, they know better. But they only want to make us look bad. Oh, hallelujah. You know in, in the, um, Old Test the New Testament times, they used to call the disciples and those who worship in cannibals because they said they're eating um, the flesh and drinking blood. Come on, you get that? Yeah. We're talking about communion here, yeah. <laughs> which is Jesus every time you do it, remember me. So they, they said things about the church and people keep believing it because some people, they want to defame the church. They want to defame us, make us look bad. But that's your problem. Sorry to say it like that. But that's your business. As long as, I, well, there is a saying that goes, who the cap fit does do what? You better wear it. Oh, man, as long as the cap is not fitting me, you can say what you want. Christophine, hypocrite, no good. You can go all the way. You can even get a thesaurus, a, 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 a thesaurus and, and, and list all the things there and say that's your business. Listen, man, we are children of God. We have something that many need, and we need to stand up and let our light shine. That that men and women will see it and know that there is a God. Come on, who can tell you? You know your life, how messed up it was. People knew how messed up it was. And now you're dancing and praising God. Oh, sometimes they tell you, you come to church because of some girl. That's your business. Hallelujah. Let my light. So Peter said it like this. As sojourners and pilgrims in this land, he says, abstain from fleshly lots. And not only that, but we as a people, sojourners and pilgrims in this land, let our light shine. Do good deeds. As I said this morning, one of the hardest things to do is to forgive people. All right, it's easy for you. Says it's difficult at times. Especially when you know you didn't do anything. And my God, they're saying some things about you. You feel like holding X and squeeze. All right, okay. Yeah. Come on, you don't give me that look. Oh, I'm sanctified and saved and washing the blood of life. I don't think those things. Come on. Huh? Sometimes when people do some things that you know you're, you're not guilty of, and so you feel like just... Don't want to say the word, all right? Yeah? You feel like doing it. But come on, church. Hallelujah. God must be glorified in my life. I am a pilgrim. I'm a sojourner on this land. Hallelujah. And I want people to see good works. I want people to know that there is a God who is alive and who is real. Then thirdly, when you look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven. <laughs> you know, when, when you think of this, there are some people... If they have an American passport, they are excited. They have a safe, they put that in and lock it up. Can't afford to lose that. Some people, if they have a British passport, woo! 
my God, <laughs> that's valuable. Woo! That goes where I have the expensive watch and ring and everything like Woo! And some folks, sad to say, it, but they change the talk too. Come on, you're there with me. <laughs> Woo! They're excited about belonging to another nation. But let me tell you something. I am a citizen of heaven. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's the best citizenship you can ever have. Oh man. Oh God. I, I hope you get that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, man. Oh, it's better than having a passport from all the countries we admire. Man, to be a citizen of heaven <laughs> whoa that is something great oh my gosh <laughs> now you want to walk with dick you, you, you could walk with dicks out there you know you you want to walk differently you want to talk differently because why i am a child of the king i have citizenship in heaven So he said, Philippians 3 and verse 20, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I got that citizenship when I repented of my sins and asked Jesus Christ to come into my life and save me. Not all the days of my life I was a citizen of heaven. But the day that I came to the altar and I repeated that sinner's prayer and repent of my sins, hallelujah, I am now a citizen of heaven. Amen. Now hear this. Philippi was a Roman colony. And we've got to understand, when Paul said this, they understood clearly what he was saying. Its citizens, therefore, were citizens of the Roman Empire. Roman citizenship carried with it great privileges and honors, also great responsibilities. Here are two of them. One, he was to govern his conduct so that it would conform to what Rome would expect of him. You couldn't say you are Roman, you had Roman citizenship, and you carried about yourself the way you want to or anyhow. It got to be according to what is expected of a Roman citizen. Oh, come on, church. Talk to me. Come on. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And God expects us to carry about ourselves the way he prescribed it in the word of God. You cannot say that you are citizens of heaven and you want to live any and any old how. It doesn't work like that. I am a citizen of heaven. Most prestigious. So he shows me how I must conduct myself. Secondly, that the Roman citizen had responsibilities and duties which were inherent in his position as a citizen of Rome. Come on, you couldn't get away from doing certain things. It's your responsibility. And listen, as Christians, children of God, the Bible says, let our light so shine that men may see it and glorify our Father which is in heaven. When we give our lives to Christ and the Holy Spirit has come in and, and take up residence inside of us and we follow the teachings of God's word, I pray project uh, that light of God. Uh, I project that uh, through my life uh, and people see it uh, and they know that there is a change. Uh, they know that there is something different. Uh, they know that this person uh, is not the same. Come on. I am a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. So when I walk down the road, I watch how I talk. Come on. Not praising God. Hallelujah. One place. And then when they get me vexed, I cussing like crazy. 
My mouth is like a machine gun. Oh, come on, church. You there with me? When they bounce you or when they mash your toe, you start spraying words like you're crazy. Come on. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. When they call me, when those girls, years ago, we used to say when the boys suit you, or the girls, uh, you know, they, they like air escaping from their mouth. Uh, when they're doing you that, uh, we used to talk about it with the men, but now there are girls who are doing the same. And listen, we have got to talk to our children about the hormones. Come on, they're kicking up, raging these days. And a lot of people, they feel, when I feel a sexual urge, I've got to release it at the same time. Come on, God brought that about at an early age in your life so that you can learn to control yourself. Come on, every time you feel it, some people say, take a cold bath. I don't know about that. Because sometimes it seems as though some people bathe in the river and all and they still getting yourself in trouble come on you're there with me amen but we need to bring control hallelujah this is something that is important church because why i am a citizen of heaven and as i walk the street as i live in the community people should know that i reflect that it is expected of me to live a life that god will get the glory Come on, when they're talking craziness, I'm not supposed to be mixing up in that. I'm a citizen of heaven. And my God, if, if God had a passport, he used to drop from heaven. That is something precious. Hallelujah. Oh man, every day. That is why, you know, it, um, in growing up, one guy said, he said, people got me so angry that I felt like putting down my salvation. Listen, this salvation we have is nothing to put down because what I discover with it, sometimes you put it down and never get a chance uh, to pick it back up again. Uh, so I cherish uh, my citizenship uh, in heaven. Uh, and it doesn't matter what people say or do. If I can walk away, I'm going to walk away. If I can leave you right there, I'm going to do it. Because why? I cherish my citizenship. So let's get back to chapter 11 of Hebrews. Hear what God says now. Hebrews 11 and verse 16. Because of the faith these guys exercise, God say, I'm not ashamed to be called their God. Could you imagine God saying that about us? Because of the faith, these guys died believing. If you, you're based on the scripture, if you had gone to Abraham at the point of death where he's dying and say, Abraham, you're not going to, it's not going to happen. Abraham might, probably might have punched get out of here because why they believed what God said hallelujah and that's the church because why the Bible talks about the new heavens and the new earth the new Jerusalem John 14 and verse 12 he said in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you that I I, I would have I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Different translation. Go and prepare a place. I will come back and welcome you into my presence so that where I am, you may be there also. Listen, our Savior, if it's not the rapture, one day we will die. Amen. I heard of, of it and I mentioned it to you um, on numerous times that this guy was rich and he said to his family when I die bury me with all my riches yeah that's all she did she wrote a check valued his possessions wrote a check threw it in the coffin that's it where are you going with that 
Sometimes we behave as though when we leave this earth, we're going to take the house with us. No, it's going to stay here. We believe as though the car we drive and, you know, some places you have big mags on it and, and you know, music. Chicka, 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 chicka. We feel all that going with us. The bank book that you admire so much. When Jim Reeves sang the song, the world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. You know why I remember that song so vividly and so much? You remember those big cassettes? When you had one of that, you felt like you're on top of the world. This big cassette, push it in. Ding, ding, ding. This world is not my own. <laughs> Church, if we can just focus a bit. And understand when we give our lives to Christ. We're now citizens of heaven. God has gone to prepare a place for us. And one day we will be with him you would look at this life differently. You wouldn't want to get yourself entangled in things that will affect you from getting to that position. Because listen, the fact is that everything we have on this earth, even the clothes, you think when they put on tuxedo and so on the dead, the dead leaving, all that thing, right? And listen to me, and, and the thing is serious. In some countries, they have to get concrete truck to put a concrete casket in the hole. Because if it's an expensive casket and they put gold teeth in the people's mouth, the grave robbers will dig it up, throw the dead, take off all the tuxedo, leave them, I don't even think leave an underwear on, and throw them, blip. They ain't taking them out and say, oh, Oh, let's, let's honor the dead. No, piff. <laughs> this world, it's not our own. We pass in through church. Let's abstain from the things that would pull us away. It doesn't worth it. What God has in store for us is far better. You hear what Paul said? Paul says, eyes had not seen, ears had not heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for his people. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, nothing happens on this earth would cause me. I'm telling you, I'm not letting nothing make me a no one. Thank you. Make me miss. <laughs> Come on, let's bow our heads. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. He's God. He's God. He's God, church. Oh, he loves us. These guys were just going and going and going because they were looking. <laughs> ah, Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to come back for you. I'm going to prepare. Come back for you. Ooh, you want to miss that? You want to miss that? No. No, no, no. No. As our eyes are closed. And our heads are bowed today. We need to search ourselves. Maybe you're at a point in your life where you started drifting away. <laughs> Listen to me. There is nothing on this earth can be compared to what God has in store for us. Nothing. The most expensive hotel they have in the world cannot be compared. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, you know, once I saw there was a place in Russia and I can't remember, I think it was President Bush. He went there and everything, I mean, if you see gold, 
and the way I mean this thing looked really really great but listen it cannot be compared with heaven oh man you give your life to Christ you are citizenship you have citizenship in heaven why 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 you would want to lose out on that maybe you're here today and probably you thought about backsliding turning your back on back your back on God maybe you're not saved and you're here today with us why not get your citizenship in heaven why not do so if you're backslider why not come back today and allow God I'm even speaking to some who are viewing us right now why not get it right <laughs> oh Reverend Danny I'm telling you what God has in store for us no part of Montrose could be compared to it <laughs> no part of St. Vincent the Grenadines why you would have thrown it away if there is anyone here and you want us to pray that Jesus Christ will come into your life and be Lord of your life today I want you to raise that hand right where you are maybe you have lost focus come on now is the time to get back get back to God maybe you have backslidden now is the time to get back if you have never given your life to Christ now is the time to get it right 